Hello, powerful one. Welcome to this edition of Final Growth to Says Why Let Me Hear You. Have you ever been hungry? When was the last time you were hungry? Do you think hunger is something good or something really, really unworthy of your body? You know, I learned some years ago that this human being is actually designed to perform much better with hunger. Because from time to time, you should allow this body feel hungry. Now, it is not a way of learning stoicism or trying to become hard on yourself. No. It's been said that about 96% of our body mass, if not more, is made up of germs. Yes, you heard me. Germs. All kinds of living entities fill up this mass of our body. It's not just some junk put together. No. And all of these entities they are feeding on the things the food that we give to it and amongst them there are the rogue entities who are out to undo our bodies now you see those rogue entities they feed more than the normal one who are harmless and they call innocuous the benign gems the benign entities let's use that word for this instead of calling them gems they are living entities like you and i so when some of them go really rogue as saying there are so many a lot of them when they have a lot of number in this body they suffer some forms of ailments some of them become cancers some of them become whatever they want to become so one of the easiest way to check them is to allow some level of hunger to hit this body some of them cannot last without you feeding them for more than 10 hours six hours if you allow a good gap to exist between the times you eat, you are actually systematically weeding out all these rogue entities. The rest of them who are benign, who are lovely, who are not going to cause you any problem, we adapt. They will use less of your energy because they are not fighting against you. Hunger is a very beautiful experience. If we allow our bodies to be hungry, there is a major, major discovery we will find. When we are attentive, to the language of our body, to the metal language spoken by our body, we will be able to discover some secrets that can help us turn our lives around. Only a situation of hunger can make something of this nature possible. And what are we talking about? Well, aren't we just here to discuss that today? When we come back right after the break, I am Oseizwa Anthony Elimihe. You know me. I am in the game of helping you grow from inside out. That is the dream. You're welcome back. So, hunger. Is it a bad thing? No. Starvation, is it a bad thing? Yes. There are two different things. Starvation means that you don't have access to basic nourishment, either by reason of poverty or by reason of incapacitation, one way or another. Deliberate hunger is a system we put in place to strengthen our body, to clean our body. The Diamonds came up with this finding that the human body has three cycles daily. There is a cycle where you actually accumulate food, there is the cycle where you actually convert food to whatever tissues and all of that in the body and there is the cycle where you evacuate food you know these cycles they run eight hours each like the cycle of accumulation of food starts from 12 noon and ends at 8 pm when the body is converting food that has been broken down to resources in our body and some of them being converted to waste that begins from hours of 8 pm to 4 a.m. Then from 4 a.m. to 12 noon, you have the process of evacuation. The diamonds advised that between the hours of 12 noon and 8 p.m. is the best time to eat. Then from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m., please do not eat anything. If you are so starved, you're so hungry, you can as well take fruits or vegetables so that those things will take minimal effort for the body to break down. It won't be of much problem to the body. Okay, that will not force the body to stop the process of conversion to start putting in more energy to break down food. There is a breakdown hour and that is the 
hours of 12 to 8 p.m. And that is under the power of the sun, the sunlight. The moonlight is not actually supposed to be invested in breaking down of food. And then when you wake up in the morning, the idea of you drinking water is a good thing. It helps you to flush because at that time, the process of evacuation has already begun since 4 a.m. Give your body more water. So if you really want to eat anything between the hours of 4 a.m. and 12 noon, let it also be either fruits or vegetables. The best option is to stay away from food till 12 so that you can help the body flush out all the materials that it has rejected. So evacuation can be proper but if you eat during the process of evacuation the evacuation process will stop and the body will return to breaking down to digestion if you can respect this process it will be great and it will help your health in a big way that's for that but even more than that there are people who eat just once a day and there are also people who eat twice a day i eat maximum twice a day there are times i eat just once a day it is because I do not think I have time to waste on trying to recuperate from ailments. But then the basic thing is this. Hunger is good. You can actually decide that for a whole day, for maybe two days straight, you are not going to eat anything. All you will just do is drink water. But there is something that I want to show you from personal experience that hunger helps us achieve. And that is introspection. There is no better time to introspect than when you are hungry. You know, when your energy is low, you actually know how you feel. But when your energy is high, you actually rise above your basic state, your basic mental state. You are not really able to listen to the language that your body is speaking until you are down. Food gives us energy. These are what we call borrowed energy. There are two ways we borrow energies. We borrow energy at the gross material level, which is food, drinks, water. And then we borrow energy at the subtle material level, which is money, the things we get, achievement, praises, acceptance, all of those things. Those are energy providers. But you see, these are all external energies. Your body needs the food type for it to go on. Your mind, your ego needs the emotional, which is the psychological or what you call subtle energy type for its you know, growth, for its development. But what do you as soul, as spirit require to grow? You don't need any of those things. You need love. You need not just to get love from people. Children need love from family, from parents to grow, from teachers to grow. But you see, adults need love from themselves. Adults need to give themselves enough love so that they can also spread that love that they have given to themselves to other people and that will enhance their growth. I won't go into the esoteric type because we also know that the soul just don't only need that love from themselves and the ones that they give to others. They also need to have the higher level of love which is the supernal, the supreme love which is called the word, the truth. That is another level entirely. But the energy that we borrow, they boil us up. It's like a river that has so many channels running into it. You see that river will swell. But when you reduce those channels, when you cut the channels out, the river will ebb. It will come down to its normal level and begin to flow at that level. Human beings who do not allow themselves some level of hunger, who do not stay away from food for a considerable amount of time other than the ordinary, more than the ordinary we find it difficult to introspect you know why because they might think that they are introspecting but the truth is that they are at the superficial level they will not be able to sense the message of their being that is being communicated for example we all have different complexes hidden inside our memory and they are just at the background of the memory. They are not fired as memories. They are fired as charges, what you call engrams, as mental diseases, mental aberrations. Generally, we call them aberrations. They are there, but we are not conscious of them because we are too busy, bubbly in the borrowed energy of food and all of that and praises of people. What if you stayed away from food for a Stay away from food for like a day. Wake up in the morning, don't eat until evening. 
let me tell you this there is something about not eating food when you have the resources to eat you are sure that you can eat food anytime but when you give yourself a gap and say okay i am not going to eat for the whole of today i have woken up by 4 a.m today i will not eat until 7 p.m and you have not been doing this before listen to what you will see you are going to see your body come up with different levels of information listen to this information and see what you get you will come across some communications that are really not you you'll be stunned at the kind of messages you are going to get you will discover if you really access these things that you have maybe low self-esteem you have some form of anger you have some level of fear you have some just name them sense of shame they might be hidden somewhere inside of you you might realize that you have a major doubt against your partner you have a major doubt against yourself you may even have a major grouse against the source you will be shocked at the level of negativity that are hidden inside of you that you are not aware of a lot of people they are darlings when things are going fine with them but when things are going bad not going in line with how they want it to be they become monsters they become very very different from what people see them as so in the real sense of the world how much of yourself do you know you have to let those borrowed energies suspend keep them aside for a while and then begin to analyze your findings you'll be stunned at what you see so fasting that is not followed by rigorous self-introspection is a waste better go and eat your food and forget about it because the purpose of fasting is not to punish yourself the purpose of fasting is to expose your ego is to expose the store of your memory and see what are hidden in there fasting lays you bare and you can really see who you are inside now you can really see what are the things that are hidden on your inside that are consistently manifesting themselves when you are off the circuits because the truth is a majority of the time 95 percent of the time we are not in the circuits we are off course we are out there gallivanting in the cosmos dwelling in thought and thought like aladdin's carpet take us on a tour of the cosmos we are just having fun gallivanting off our course and when we are away who takes charge of course the subconscious mind takes charge and in that place the ego is running supreme so when you go into fasting you see that that possibility of you dwelling in thought is first of all damaged because you don't have enough energy and then your storehouse is laid bare to you realize that you really don't have much things to be proud of that what you have acquired here have always been borrowed items now that the items are not there you are seeing things as they really are now that gives you the opportunity to self-analyze to now know how to couch your affirmations your life restoring data that you will dwell on on a daily basis give hunger a try and you'll be surprised at how much you discover and how much resources you are offered to help yourself fasting without introspection is a waste of time god bless you.